Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have Senior Ruby Ambassador Sally Crosby with us tonight, and she is going to share a little bit um, just about some things that she is really awesome at. And then we have some questions for her. So Sally, if you want to share any of your journey before you get started, you can. And if not, we can do it later, whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah, I'm happy to. I'll go ahead really quick. First of all, thank you guys so much for having me. I cannot even tell you how honored I am to even be asked to be on a call. Like, y'all, this is just, I'm just such a normal average person. Like, this is so random. And I don't even know if I'm going to share anything that's major with you guys tonight. So I just want to go ahead and say that up front that I'm so grateful that Rachel asked me um, to be on with you guys. It's truly an honor and I'm excited um, to get to know some of you guys a little bit better tonight. Um, Rachel and I kind of connected uh, a couple ways. Both of our husbands are in ministry, and also she's in New Jersey, and I I have New Jersey ties, but I don't live there anymore. I don't know if any of you guys on the call are in Jersey, but I went to high school there. I was in the um, Princeton area, so I went to West Windsor Plainsboro High School and um, have been in Texas ever since, since college. It's crazy random. Um, never been to Texas in my life, went to college there, and then met my husband and never went back to the Northeast. So I do miss it, and I love Jersey, and I still have so many good friends there. So I want to say that up front, that I'm a Jersey girl at heart. Um, but um, so my story a little bit is um, Melissa Darby, who I know, I think we're all on, under the Darby team, was one of my very best friends in college at Baylor University. And um, she had contacted me about Plexus. Um, Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to look at my timeline here. It was June of 2013, you guys, three years ago, <laughs> three, like she had just started and she was doing, you know, what we are all probably encouraged to do, you know, reach out to some of those best friends of yours and see if they want to do this with you. Just reach out to them. Well, I was like, no, I was like, no, I don't think so. I don't think this is my cup of tea. Um, I had done something else before and made like $13 and 28 cents um, and spent like a fortune trying to start my business. So I was like, um, and so I think I just had this misconception about what Plexus was, but I know that now. Right. Um, and she said, she kept talking to me about it. And honestly, you guys, I signed up to get her kind of off my back. Cause I was just, we were tight and, I just, I wanted to support her, but I also was like, eh, we'll see how long this lasts and I don't really have to do anything. I'll just sign up and that will like totally appease her. Right. So, um, I did and, um, I turned off my backup order. Y'all, I gave my welcome pack to somebody. I was like, uh, she added me to the team pages. Um, I took myself off of her team page because I was like, I cannot keep up with all of this. What the heck? I'm like getting tagged like five times a day. I don't even know if I want to do this. You know how it is, right? At the beginning, you're like, oh my gosh. I have to interrupt that. That is my favorite part of, <laughs> it was some video I watched a while ago. I think it was when Mel was like the guest speaker on your team call and it was recorded yeah. and posted it. And I was like, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like, like, well, it's kind of embarrassing, you know, but now we talk about it. We laugh. And I think, you know, I think what that shows everybody, and it was, it was just an aha moment for me too. You know, when we are talking to people about doing this with us, we do have to understand, like, even if our, you know, remember what our initial reaction was, you know, like it, mine was extremely hesitant, very skeptical. Um, and so, you know, if we do hear a no from people, we can't, obviously you guys know this by now too, that you just can't take it personally. You never know where that person is in the journey. Um, and we got to put ourselves kind of in their shoes and remember what, even what, how we were when we first heard about it. Um, anyway, long story short, um, I kind of put this back on the back burner and was kind of like, mm. and, um, Melissa had asked me to come to Dallas for, um, I was living in Lubbock at the time. That's where I live now. And, um, Lubbock, Texas is like five hours from Dallas. And Melissa and I hadn't seen each other in a while. And she was like, it was her birthday weekend. And it was the same weekend of Plexus convention in Dallas. That was almost three years ago now. And, um, she was like, Hey, I have got this hotel room. Like little did I know, like, I think she was almost Emerald at the time. I think she had won like this suite. Like she wasn't telling me all this. She's like, Hey, you know, if you want to be my guest, um, you know, I, ha I can bring someone to this dinner. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm not really doing plexus kind of big time like you. And she was like, no, you can just come and hang out. So I go to convention. She kind of teased me into going. 
and kind of got me there. And you guys, I will tell you that that's totally what changed it for me. I had to get there. I met so many cool people that weekend. I literally got, you know, those conversations that you get to have one-on-one -on -one that kind of really make a difference where you kind of say, okay, I can see, oh my gosh. And you guys too, this is just me being real, but she was telling me what she was making. And, you know, I've been busting my chops trying, I'd always been trying to work with my husband in ministry and trying to help support our family. And I got to be honest with you, that was super appealing to me to maybe have this extra income where I could have some flexibility. So anyway, I'm giving you guys a long version, but just because I want you to know kind of how I started was probably not the norm. And my journey started out and it was a little slower. Um, so after that weekend when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. This is awesome. Yay. Go Plexus. Totally understood more about what the products did. Kind of got more of a, the gist of it. Um, that next month after convention, I, so I came home and I was like, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to give it a fair shot. It's too, there's just, this is an amazing opportunity. Um, the next month I went in July, um, in July I went silver. Okay. Um, I went gold in October. So a couple months later, or many months later, pretty much. Yeah, a couple months. Um, senior gold in May of 2015. So that was my longest stretch from gold to senior gold. Um, ruby in August of 2015. And then in January of this year, I went for senior ruby, and I've got my sight set on emerald, hopefully, by um, God willing, by July 31st. We'll see. We're going to try really, really hard. But my point in this is I know that we always hear these stories of, like, fast growing teams and my journey was just a little bit slower and I just, I'm, you know, it is what it is. We all have our own stories with this and this has just kind of been mine. I've learned so much and um, I wouldn't do it any other way. So that's kind of what's got me to today. Um, of course, now I'm a full 110% believer, not only in these products and I've seen what they can do for friends and family, but also in this opportunity and how it's changing our lives. So I am so thankful that I decided to um, give it a chance. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. Thank no, you, no. Allie. Yeah. Do you want to start and just share a little bit about like how the whole like the attitude piece on just like our attitude and how that affects everything? Yeah. Um, I am by nature a, a generally like you know just kind of positive person. However, I do have a real side. Um, you know, I'm not always like, you know, rainbows and unicorns and sparkles and peace all the time. I do have my, you know, just normal real person. Um, <clears throat> and you know, I think throughout this journey, especially watching and being a part, you know, my sponsor was diamond in no time. Okay. And then there's me who's just kind of had a slower journey just because I had to kind of get there myself. Um, and you know, I think that, you know, for me, especially kind of with my team and, you know, I always try to have this positive front um, with them. But however, like one on one, I, I do feel like there's times of vulnerability and like, OK, I get it, you know, being real with each other. But for the most part, um, I think I've just had to trust that as long as that I, I think, you know, I've heard this so many times and I really do believe it. I think that as long as we're not if we don't quit, as long as we don't give up you know, we're going to get there. It doesn't matter what the timeline is. We, we will get there. It, even if it takes, you know, I know we hear this a lot, but it's so true. If it takes three to five years to, to get financial freedom, have a, little, a lot more wiggle room or a little bit more wiggle room, isn't it so worth it? Um, that's what I have to go back to. Um, when, you know, there's, there's always like at this time of the month for a lot of people can be kind of discouraging. We can kind of get, um, kind of some, you know, just discouraged feelings or get, you know, we can get frustrated with all this back office stuff and our shipping or whatever the issues might be, because you guys, I know I have felt it too. And I, it has been kind of like, but <laughs> I think, um, just, I have just, I, and you know, I'm, I realize that maybe positivity might come more naturally for some, but I think that, even when we don't want to have the positive tone, especially for our teammates and customers, we have to kind of take it till we make it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Does that kind of answer your question? I didn't really, I don't know. 
Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I reached out to Jana and asked her, you know, she knows your journey more than I do. And so I asked her, I said, you know, what are some things that you think would be good for Sally to share on? And she was like, her attitude is so amazing. And that's what's gotten her where she is. And so that's why I had asked about the attitude yeah. piece. And I really, you said something in there that triggered something for me. Oh, I think a lot of us, uh, well, all of us on this call, obviously we're all under Celeste. And I think Celeste's team as law at large is obviously the fastest growing in the company. Like she's the fastest and then it, you know, duplicates down. And so I think sometimes we look at, you know, these people who rank up so quickly and we're like, Oh, what am I doing wrong? Like I know for myself, there's people that um, will post, you know, these training calls or things and they're like, well, I hit senior Ruby and realized, man, I should start a team page or, Oh, I should start doing training calls. <laughs> and we're like, we've been doing this since we had like two ambassadors. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and it, it, it sort of messes with your brain a little bit. But yeah. when you look at network marketing in general, it takes much, much longer than it does in Plexus to get to the top or to get to even what any of us on this call are making. It, like you said, you made $13.28. <laughs> you know, so I think that's something that I think is so key to keep in mind that, you know, you haven't even been signed up three years and you're on the cusp of one of the biggest promotions. And so, you know, that's exciting and encouraging. So, um, yeah, exactly. What the, so the first question is, um, which you already did the first part, sharing your story. And then you shared how you stalled a little bit at gold. Is there something that you feel like caused that stall? Um, and then what did you do to break out of it? Yeah, I was thinking about this today when I was looking at the questions and stuff. And I think, I think for me, I kind of, and I feel like you guys might know this. I don't know how many of y'all are gold or heading towards gold right now or already passed it. So I don't know where all you guys are, but you know, I feel like with, with gold is something that is possible that you can do on your own. Like, I mean, let's just say, you know, we have people all the time that fast start gold or we see that happen a lot. I mean, to get 20 people is a big feat and it takes a lot of work, but people can do that on their own. Um, I think for me, when I hit gold, I realized that to get to that next spot, I could not do it on my own. And I had to kind of reevaluate some of the folks on my team and kind of, I think a lot of them were wholesale buyers. Um, I, I kind of ha had a lot, I had some family, you know, I mean, you can get those 20 people, you can pull from different networks. They might not all want to do the business. And so for me, I had to come to the grips with like, okay, I'm a leader. I need to figure out who is in this and who really wants to grow because that I wasn't thinking necessarily like that's the only reason that's going to help me grow. But I knew that to get to gold, yeah, you're doing most of the heavy lifting on your own. I mean, you can have definitely have help, but you can do it on your own. I thought for the next level and to keep going, I'm going to need some help and I need some folks that want to do this with me and really want to go for it. So it took me a couple months to have to figure that out. Like, and I will tell you that um, someone gave me this piece of advice, you know, I don't know how you guys, your team is, but my team is kind of all over the country. I don't get to see them all the time. And, um, my brother-in-law is, does really well in sales. And I had asked him for some advice one time and he was like, you cannot forget about personal contact and personal touch, even like with these people and build these relationships with them. And, um, I think a lot of it was going on over internet and social media. And I just felt like, okay, I'm going to make some effort and pour into some of these relationships and call them. Like I went through all my people. I, cause you know, you know, it's, I mean, it's easy to be on text and everything. Like I don't even like to talk on the phone. I'm going to be honest. Like I hate the phone. So that was kind of out of my comfort zone, but calling people, um, and in even sending the messages like, Hey, just kind of, and I was very bold in saying, Hey, kind of tell me where you are with this, because if you want to move forward, I really want to help you with those goals. And if you don't, that's great too. But I feel like when I got some response from them and kind of opened the communication, I knew who I could push and who I needed to just kind of let be. And they were comfortable as just being what they were doing, maybe being a wholesale buyer. They had no desire in the business. Um, and I think that's when things started to change because I, it took a couple months, granted, but there was three or four people that I identified or had told me point blank. I, this is something that I really would like to help either replace my income or be a blessing to my family or da, 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 da. So those were the four people that I kind of tried to invest a lot of my time and energy with. And 
helped them kind of build their base and get a, get some growth. And then that's kind of when things, um, you know, I realized it just, it couldn't be me anymore. And I don't mean that in a selfish way, but, um, I think you guys all know what I mean by that. Just, I, you know, you kind of need some help and, but you're, they're also getting to where they want to be too. And so that's kind of how I feel like I pushed past some of that rut that I was in is that I kind of identified who was all in. Um, let's see. I, um, so I didn't, I didn't necessarily focus on adding new team members, even though that was happening a little bit, but I, what I more focused on was fostering the ones that were already in and that wanted it. I kind of decided, okay, I do want to grow more. You always kind of want to grow more, right? But I did want to foster some of those relationships with those ones that wanted it. Um, let's see what I said. Okay. So we started doing weekly zoom calls, which clearly you guys are doing and that's great. Um, I focused a lot on training. Um, I will say, and I, this is just, I'm going to just say this and it's all in love, but my sponsor, Melissa, so she was at diamond and kind of, you know, up here. And I was, you know, kind of, I, I'm going to just say this cause I know she wouldn't care, but I kind of was very independent because she at diamond kind of had, um, all, I mean, not only like business stuff going on in her life, but family, like personal things. And, you know, I was just one of, and she always gives me such incredible time and attention and she makes me feel so valued and important it's not that but she is her time and her people and everything spread thin so I think one good thing that was good for me was when I hit gold I was kind of like I got I'm I gotta do I need to be independent I need to figure this out for myself I cannot always rely I could rely on her but I didn't want to rely on her for pouring into my team it was my turn do you know what I mean and so I focused a lot on training um we do like a new, um, we do this like once a month or every other month. Every time there's new folks, I do like a separate page just for training. That's like basic so that like it doesn't get lost in the shuffle of other team things and announcements. And I keep it short and I only post once a day for two weeks. It's like Plexus 101. Um, and that kind of gives them that focused training. And then I let anyone in my downline add people to that. Um, let's see. Um, Zoom calls were huge. I felt like people were feeling valued and like that we were connecting because over the miles, you know how it is when you're like, I don't even know these people on my team. And then you can start connecting over Zoom. Um, being active on my team page and really like treating Plexus like it was a full time thing, even though I know that that can't be the case for everybody. But like every day, this is what I do, you know. And let's see, it started when I got to like Ruby. Um, I think it's when some of the back office stuff or when we changed over, you know, guys, I don't know how many, how long y'all have been in doing this. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, I remember. Um, and that was a time too, when I felt like I, as a team leader, I'm going to take a brunt of a lot, take a load off of people. And I'm not joking. You guys, I would call customer service almost every day. And I know your leader, Rachel does that. Cause we've talked about that. I know she's really good about that. That's such a blessing. Um, but I would just be like, okay, I'm calling today. What do you need done? And that was just what I did in the morning. And that was just, I kind of treated this like a job. Um, and I feel like this whole journey, I'm sorry, I'm getting kind of off here. Rachel, you can cut me off. But I feel like at this part of where we all are is like you're pushing this heavy boulder up this giant hill. And it's a lot of work on the front end. And we might not even feel like we're getting paid enough for some of the work or the hours that we're putting in, right? Um, putting out fires, keeping customers happy, keeping ambassadors happy, checking on shipping, um, training. I mean, there's so many little things that we, we have to keep on track and we might think, Oh my gosh, is this worth it? Is it worth it? We're pushing really hard. We're doing a lot of heavy lifting, pushing this boulder up this steep hill, but eventually, and this is what we have to remember. We're going to get to the top of the hill. And it's going to be so much smoother once we get up on that top and that boulder can just float down. That's when the magic happens. That's like why we push and we push and we work hard now and we put the time and the effort in now. And we build that strong foundation now with training and everything else. And then when we get to the top, I don't mean diamond, but whatever that means for you. And it gets kind of like a little bit easier. You get that residual income. That's just like the nice little bonus. And you've trained your team to do and kind of be independent. And that's really ultimately the beauty of network marketing and what 
what we can have with this opportunity is what is so desirable for all of us. So anyway, long answer to, I really just kind of decided it's about me now. Like I can't rely on, I love my leader and she's amazing and she supports me 200%, but she doesn't know my people like I know my people and she, you know, I, it's my turn now and I have to do so a little bit of heavy lifting and pour into them and hopefully it will pay off. <laughs> That was great. Thank you. I loved, I loved the Plexus 101 group. That's a really good idea. Um, so thank you for that. So the next question is, um, and I don't know, I obviously don't know your personal business, so I don't know where you're at right now, but I know for a super long time you had like really crazy high PV. Um, so what are your tips on building your PV and your customer base? Yeah. Um, I, I, I did, I have had from the get go a strong customer base. I always did. Um, and I will say, okay, so before I was kind of doing Plexus really full time, I had like four or five jobs, just little things here and there. One of those jobs was I was a fitness trainer. I was at a gym and I was teaching classes at like two different gyms. And so Plexus was a good fit just cause naturally I was kind of already in that health and wellness world a little bit. And so, um, I, I feel like for me, one of the positive things that came from, from that aspect of what I was doing before Plexus is that I think people knew, okay, she values um, health, wellness, and fitness the right way. I didn't want to promote a quick, fit, quick fix. That's why I was a little bit hesitant about Plexus at the beginning because I didn't want people to think that, oh, you just take this, forget about the exercise when that's all, I, my, that's what my life was for years and in teaching exercise. Um, so I think you don't have to, I don't feel like people have to be like crazy fitness fanatics and workout freaks to be good at this. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I do think is that we have to remember is that when we become a plastic plexus ambassador, health, wellness, anything that comes into that category needs to be a part of our branding that we are, we are, all, we're in that. So whatever we're posting you know, like I said, this isn't, this doesn't have to be like crazy workout person. You don't, you know, don't have to be like that, but you know, like, um, I feel like not only was I posting about Plexus, but I, you know, I was also posting about articles about health, wellness, just like I know probably so many of you guys do now that you're doing Plexus and your, your eyes have been open to all these things with about how Plexus can help change our health. It's not just the outside, you know, um, but so much is also good stuff is going on on the inside. So I think that that is a huge part of our gaining our trust from people. I feel like I had some trust, um, at the beginning cause people knew this wasn't just something I was going to do. Um, and I will tell my story to people when I am visiting with potential ambassadors and I feel like it's, it, they need to know that I had to kind of investigate this a little bit myself too. And even with my customers, I'm kind of like, Hey, I kind of had to figure it out for myself. Um, and, you know, I just feel like having the lifestyle, like I said, doesn't have to be like exactly what I painted about what I went through. But, um, you know, I feel like if they know that you have, you, you know, you've kind of done your homework, you know, the right steps to make for a healthy lifestyle, um, not, not just exercise, but like I was like, I didn't know anything about gut health or candida or how blood sugar was connected to so many different things. And still I started doing plexus. So then I started sharing that and somehow kind of integrating plexus in that. Sometimes I would post and many times I still do this. I don't even mention plexus. I just try to get something kind of health related to kind of hook my audience. And then, um, you know, I feel like that just kind of helps build my brand or share a healthy recipe or this doesn't mean I live like this perfect, healthy lifestyle and eat clean 110%. No, but I'm probably not going to be posting the splurge donut holes um, from Sunday morning on my Facebook page in case, you know, I just try to be careful and, you know, whatever. You just want to kind of, you're creating a branding for healthy living. Um, even if you're on that journey, just getting started, you invite people to join it with you. And I feel like that kind of builds some credibility. Um, I've also lived like in so many different places and I have networks all over the country. And I feel like that was part of a way to that. I, I had a big customer base is that, um, I just knew people from all over. And then also I, 
I didn't, this was, this is one of the first time, like I wasn't really super duper active on Facebook. I mean, I kind of was, but you know, Plexus took it to a whole new level. And so I think that when people were like, oh my gosh, she's like posting about this like two or three times a day and we haven't seen her in like six months. Like I, I think that they were kind of like, okay, there must be something to this. That's kind of spoke loudly to my um, audience. So, um, since then, I mean, I feel like um, sharing testimonials is always huge. Um, that will all normally get me some interest all the time. Um, or, and, you know, especially if you can tag the person. Actually, I know you guys know all the stuff. That kind of gives you that credibility. Sometimes people just need to see um, a transformation with their own eyes. Um, and then also posting about different things other than one specific topic, like, one time, and I know we have to probably be careful about this now with compliance, but, um, you know, one time I, you know, posting on, you know, how it can help with anxiety and then, you know, not just weight loss things, but there might be people that see a post about, I know we have to be careful about this now. I don't know how we're going to figure it all out, but we will. Um, migraines, or I had did a post on headaches one time, and I remember I got two new customers that day because they were like, I didn't really know. Plexus could help with my mig or migraines and I you know I had to explain it to them. Yeah, it's all it could be blood sugar related if you want to give it a shot, blah 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 blah. Um I think that was a good way too to kind of maybe perk some interest from my audience. Um, um let's see if I have anything else to say about that. But and over time as I've grown, I, my customer base is not is is it's high. I've had to be a little bit more creative. I cannot rely just on Facebook anymore to get my customers because let's be honest, I've been doing this now for almost two and a half years and my audience knows that I share and love Plexus. So if they're not going to respond to some of my posts, I've had to get a little bit creative um, and be more bold about talking about it, you know, in the right time, in the right place. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not always the great, I'm not always Plexus, Plexus, Plexus everywhere I go, but if I can somehow bring it into a conversation outside of Facebook, I will. And that is just something that's come over with time. I used to be scared to death to do that. Um, it's gotten easier and I've gotten more confident. You know how it is when you know a little bit more about the product or um, anything like that. Those little things all together, I think, kind of help grow um, the customer base. And I've also, like anytime there's a special like this, what we've experienced this, this month, I will circle back to people I mean, don't get me wrong. People tell me no still too, and they have in the past, but sometimes I'll circle back. I'm big about follow-up. Like if somebody has ever mentioned it to me, I have them on a list and they are on my list forever. Like I, I you know, in a good way, like I'll circle back. Like with this 15% off deal, always a good time, a good excuse to follow up with somebody again, you know? Definitely. That's great. Thank you. Um, so what would you say is your normal DMO or an average, like, you know, IPA that you would do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote this down. Now, granted, this isn't a perfect day and we all know that that's probably not always going to happen, right? With kids and everything else that we have going on in our lives. But these, I have this written out in, on my desk and I try to do this every day. Okay. Check on one wholesaler because I have in the past almost forgotten about them and I need to, you need, we need to treat our customers, our wholesalers just like customers, especially if they are not wanting to do the business. We can't forget about them. So I'm always checking in on those just like I would customers. So every day I'll go, I have a list of all my wholesalers. I'll try to check on one of them, just kind of see how they are, see if they need anything. Sometimes they don't get back to me. I get that too. I get the silent treatment. Um, Let's see. Oh, and um, I have, and I know you guys do this too, um, upcoming orders for the following week for, on auto ship for customers. So I'll check in with those people that have something next week. So I check on a wholesaler. I'm going to check on my customers with upcoming auto ships. Just make sure everything's okay. Just want to let you know um, your shipment is scheduled to process again on the first. Is that still cool or do we need to edit it? Okay, this is all over text. So all good. Um, follow up with two potentials. Those could be customers or ambassadors. So I try to circle back and follow up. And again, I'm 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 not. I'm just. I get I get the silent treatment. Like I said, there's times where nobody's gonna ride me back. But you guys, at least we we try, right? At least we do what we can. Um, reach out to one potential 
this is not every day. I wish it was, but I need to be better about that. Um, post on my team page, one, so that's on my DMO. Um, and something maybe training wise, it doesn't have to be, but I want to try to do one thing on there a day. I have a customer page too that I have. Um, so I try to post on that once a day and that is just for my customers or anybody in my downline and I let them add whoever and on there I'll do more product specific info or testimonials. So I'll try to post something on that every day. And then on my own personal Facebook post, my wall, I would like to try to do one Plexus Facebook post a day and one personal Facebook post a day. <gasps> that is in an ideal world. Okay. But I do think it's good to kind of have that guide because you guys all know how we can get so caught up in, you know, scrolling on Facebook forever. And if I do not have something that's going to focus, you know, you know, and, and there's some times on the weekends where I will pre-plan my posts for the whole week. Like I'll just, because I know I'm going to have a busy week. So if I see a post that I like that somebody else has done, I'll copy and paste it and put it in my drafts for my email, save the picture. So it's kind of already there. Or, um, you know, I, I do sometimes do some pre-planning so that I can have something every day. And I'm big on balance with my personal Facebook page. Like, I have found that, like I told you a little bit earlier, like the longer I've done this, I have had to get creative and bringing back some of my audience. This is just the nature of what we do and just, you know, trying to reach out. There's people that I know see my post, they don't like it. But um, in order to balance that, I do have to have, you know, these people are my friends because they want to keep up with my life, my kids, my family, things that I love to do. And I can't forget that. And I think having a balance and not always plexus, plexus, plexus is huge. And so there are days that I might do more personal posts or not a, not a plexus post because I feel like I just don't want, I'm really aware of, I don't want to be white noise um, in people's news feeds. So um, right before I hit post all the time, I just try to think, okay, what would this look like? Um, how is this coming across to somebody? Um, does it look like I'm, do I look desperate? Do I look like I'm sharing information because I care? Is it, um, you know, those are the things that I've kind of had to ask myself. I look back at some of my older posts and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, you know how I would, I, it was just kind of like blatant, like sales, like buy me. And I don't, I don't want to be like that. I don't, that's not, I mean, at this point in the game, people know I do this and I want to more educate them and teach them things that I wish I would have known probably before I did Plexus, then kind of blitz them with graphics and um, sales and all stuff that, you know, might, you know, especially I used to be really wordy on my shocker, shocker me, right? Uh, I used to be really wordy on my posts. And like, I, I can't, you know, there's times I'm realizing, even when I'm scrolling through people's, I'm not going to spend five minutes reading like the longest post ever about alpha lipoic acid. I'm not. And so what, why would I post something like that? Anyway, those are, those, that's kind of my DMO on a general basis. I'm not going to lie. I do not do this every day, but at least this gives me a skeleton. Check on a wholesaler, check on customers that have upcoming orders, right? Always want to stay on top of that for, I, that's my pet peeve that I tell my people like there's nothing worse than getting an auto ship when you are not ready or haven't had the heads up. I just feel like that's a huge respect we can give to our customers. Um, follow up with a couple potentials, whether it's customers that said that they were interested or an ambassador, reach out to a potential cold calls. I think we're going to talk about that in a minute, possibly get out of your comfort zone. Like I said, that is where I need like the most work. Um, post on your team page. I don't know if y'all have team pages yet um, or and post on a customer page. I don't feel like it's ever too early to have a customer page. If you have like two or three people and you want to just have a, a, a place that's just for your customers to share and, you know, sometimes it's easier to be, um, to be um, active on that for some people that are shy or don't want to always have their journey all over Facebook. So that's one way you could do it. And then work on a personal Plexus Facebook post from me, from Sally, and then um, a, ple a plexus and a personal one. Woo!
Thank you. Um, so, are you okay? It's t almost ten after nine. Are you good for another question? Or yeah, yeah, yeah I'm good. All right. And, yeah, I was thinking. Um, now on the number five that you gave me, I don't really have anything specific to that. So if you don't, we don't have to get to that if you don't want to. I kind of talked about that already about the network. Okay, perfect. So we'll just end with number four then. So yeah. the last question, unless you have anything else you want to share, um, or what are your biggest cold call tips or cold messaging tips? Okay. I'm going to be honest and say, like you guys probably just gathered from my little um, DMO, this is not my strongest suit, but something that I'm trying to work on. Um, I am so big on just seeming genuine and personal to people that um, I have a hard time doing like a copy and paste general, general thing because I just don't want to seem insincere. Like that is my, that I know my reservations when I was coming into this. And so I just am super careful not to want to be that way with other people. So this has been an area that I need to work on. And the reason I say that is because it takes a little time and effort to, when we do send somebody kind of a message out of the blue that we haven't seen in a while, um, we gotta, we gotta work on that and make it sound like it's from us and maybe dig a little deep and, you know, I always feel like it's best to start by, you know, totally complimenting somebody and telling them, um, you know, something good about them, why you would, you know, first I always say something like, um, Hey, you look so happy. And then like, I can in you insert like a genuine, like I literally will maybe like, like, um, address like a picture that I just saw. Or like I'll go to their timeline and be like, okay, I'm going to like kind of tell them, oh my gosh, your kids are getting so big. That's so general. Maybe something a little bit more specific. Um, but then tell them a little bit about what I'm doing and why I feel like they would be really good at it. And that's why I say that I feel like these can take some time because this is not going to be a copy and paste kind of a thing. If you guys want, I do have some stuff that I share with my team that I could share with Rachel. I have an example about something you could send somebody about the products. And then I have another example that I send to people about the business. But, um, and I'm happy to share that with you guys because um, I think it'll give you a good skeleton. Like you, I feel like it's huge to, to stress, like just kind of making it your own because, you know, we don't want to send three people the exact same message. I know that that's, you guys probably know that too, but I have not had the best success with this. I did it early on. And I was kind of copying and pasting. I'm going to be honest. And I never even heard back from a bunch of people. And there would be some that would be like, thanks, but no thanks. Um, since I've been doing this a little bit longer, I'm a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more bold about almost just keeping it short, the shorter and the shorter, the better. Like, um, I don't need to get into too much detail about the compensation plan and nothing like that. And depending on who it is, um, you know, I feel like I, I can share a little bit about more about paychecks or bonuses or, you know, there's some people that that might be what it's going to take. And that would be my advice. I think when you are reaching out to somebody, whether it's a customer or an ambassador, if you're kind of reaching out from the blue, I feel like you have to have a reason to make you think of, um, something that's triggering you to do that. Is it that they have talked on Facebook that they're, they're complaining about money is tight or, is, are they talking about something on Facebook, like about aches and pains or that they just found out they have fibromyalgia or whatever? I feel like when you do reach out to them, if you can kind of touch on that need that they have um, and seem like, you know, you're reaching out to them because you genuinely care because you'd love to help them meet that need because you've been there too. And, you know, Plexus has done this for you and, or you know, maybe change your finances in a way that you've never seen before. And, you're just being totally honest and thinking that this opportunity might be a good fit for them because of X, Y, Z. Um, let me know if you have more, want more info. And I, then I think it's a good way to transition. We're always doing like online events or like an opportunity call. And I know you've done one too, Rachel. I remember watching it. It was really good. But I think at that point, maybe asking them, hey, would you be interested in joining our Facebook event that we're doing next week? You could hear a little bit more. I just didn't know if, you, you know, I'm always super probably overly careful about, you know, I just am just, I want to respect whatever they do. So I don't know if I'm the best person to talk about this because I've struggled with this, but I'm trying to be better because I think we all know that 
there's people in our minds, in our hearts that we think about when we either, or that need the products, right? Um, that who could, I have people that I'm like, I know they could do this better than I could. I know they could. And reaching out to them makes me like stick to my stomach because I get so nervous, uh, right? But there's two that I have done that multiple times and I haven't heard anything from them. So, you know, it is what it is. I feel like just like I have to remember again, back to my story, like it took me a couple exposures before I even was slightly even interested. I even had to meet people face to face. And I know not all of us get the luxury of going to convention and plexus events and seeing how awesome everybody is. But you guys know it clearly because you've been in this. So I, I feel like we just have to remember that no is not always just a no right then might need a little bit more reminders. They might need to watch a little bit more. I feel like sometimes people want to know, like we're almost the guinea pig. For, for some people watching us, like they, they want to know how long it's going to last, um, how long we're really going to stick with it, um, how much money we're really like, really, really can make a living out of this. And we, you know, yeah, we can, right? Um, so I feel like all that kind of comes together with cold calls and just, or cold messages. I, I don't ever cold call. I'm just, I don't know. I, when I first started Plexus, I had like a couple people from different companies like just friends that were doing other network marketing things, send me a message. And I just, I just felt like I, I thought to myself, I, I don't know if I want to approach it this way all the time. I feel like there's a time and a place for that. But some of them were worded. So like I could tell they were like cutting and pasting. Like, I don't, I don't ever want to make somebody feel like that. You know what I mean? So I think there is a time and place for these for sure. I think you have to kind of gauge it. Um, kind of, it's kind of a, every, every instance is going to be different, but, um, you know, I feel like if there has been some sort of reconnection in your life, either through Facebook or, you know, you saw them at, at, at the store or at church and you hadn't seen them in a while, that's an open door to send them a message. If it's somebody from like sixth grade geometry or whatever, what did we take in sixth grade? Not geometry. I don't know. Sixth grade science, grade school, middle school. And they haven't heard from you about anything until now. And you're messaging them about being on your Plexus team. They're probably going to be like, what? Like, so I think there's like a time and a place for it. I always feel better reaching out and sending a message like that when I've had an opportunity of reconnecting with somebody somehow. Then I feel like, okay, that door's kind of been opened a little bit. This isn't totally random. Does that, that make, make sense? sense? Totally. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but I think too that focuses on the relationship side. Like, you know, if you have somebody that's from sixth grade science that you think would be good, like reconnecting with them first and working yes. on building that relationship, you know, instead of coming out of the blue. Um, Absolutely. So, thank you so much, Sally, for your time. We super appreciate it. I hope, I, like I said, you guys, I know you guys are rocking and rolling. Rachel has like totally bragged about you guys. So, I don't even know if I said anything worth. Oh, you had great tips. But I'm excited for you guys and for your future. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, Thank Sally. You. Have a great night. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.